Well, hey, everybody, this is Michael Hoffman, and uh, that noise that you hear in the back is me opening up uh, a little biscotti. Oh, nice. I love biscotti, and I love a little coffee when we do these types of things. I've got my cup of Hoff mug. Oh, just a cup of Hoff, a little demi toss of what we're about to talk about, especially with biscotti. Oh, my God. Mm. That makes for an extremely great podcast and um, webinar. So I think we're off to a really, really good start. I just wanted to welcome everybody, first of all, for coming and hanging out. This is going to be a rather unique situation. I hope you've got your cup of Java, your cup of something that you're going to sit around with and just hang out for the next uh, little while. As we talk about one of the things that I think is tremendously important for all of us in the service business, whether you uh, our frontline service or you're on the phone service, face-to-face -face, uh, technology. Uh, anytime you deal with people, it's got to be on a skill level. And the reason why we're having this is because Chris Pollock from Pollock & Pollock is sponsoring our webinar today. As a matter of fact, we're doing this in response to the ending of Customer Service Week. Yes, Customer Service Week is finally over. And I know you might not be listening to this podcast uh, or this webinar during customer service week and if in fact if you're not here live then you are listening to this post and that's okay too because you know if you think about it every week is customer service week i think uh and that means one thing that means that you've got to understand that what you do is tremendously important and it's not on your dna they're not going to find service expert on your dna service will always be about people and it will always be about skill doesn't matter doesn't matter what your product is doesn't matter what your industry is. What matters is that you understand the concepts that when I'm in front of somebody and I've got to hold their attention and I've got to be present and I've got to listen to them and I've got to identify needs and then I've got to go out of my way to fill those needs, hopefully at the moment uh, while we're there, but if not, we know what's the next step. And then I've got to help uh, ensure those people accept what that need is, especially if we're trying to build advocates and uh, having people go away tremendously happy. Remember, um, I have a philosophy in service, and that is satisfaction is a feeling. Loyalty is an action. What do I do? What can I say to ensure that my people are not just satisfied, but they remain uh, loyal, and they are advocates for what we do, and that takes skill. My name is Michael Hoffman. I'm president of a company called Igniting Performance. And for those of you who know me, uh, I am the master of the tornado, and I want to help you become the master of the tornado. All of our programs are on the concept of owning it, you know, owning what we say, owning what we do, owning how we approach this situation on purpose to have true influence. And so we've created a program called Cup of Hoff, Becoming a, Pro, a Person of Influence, and we try to uh, feed you uh, these, these little ideas, these little concepts, these skill sets, if you will, on a weekly basis that keep you thinking, how about me? Hmm. What do I do? What do I say in these situations that have people walking away going, that's why I shop here. And uh, that's why I love this person. I know you've experienced that. Have you ever walked away from a situation going, did anybody just hear me? I was amazing. Have you ever been on that conversation where what you had to say or do is so important and, and you knew it too? I mean, man, you knew it. So when you hung up the phone, you should have taken a moment, you probably didn't, but you, you should have taken the moment and gone, did anybody hear me? I was amazing. I really was. It's those moments that you are quite aware of the fact that you are doing things and saying things that are having influence. It's not just your pheromones or the skill or the uh, the scent that you're giving off. You're actually doing things and saying things that are having tremendous influence. Oh, look! I've got I've got chocolate, mm. melted chocolate. The biscotti was leaning up against my cup of half, and I got chocolate everywhere. Oh man. I don't know if you can see me right now, but that's delicious. And we're going to do things that are delicious today, too. This program is sponsored by Pollock & Pollock, and they are constantly finding ways to invest in your skill sets and help you be true people of influence, especially in the industry of service. Because it's not only a service about people, service about skill. And uh, Chris from Pollock & Pollock definitely wants to ensure that you are doing your jobs as on purpose as possible and becoming true people of influence. So let's get into it. I've got uh, something that I think is tremendously important because this could be you. I know it is. Uh, we're just handling too many things, so many people. Uh, we're uh, not only uh, online, we're in front of folks, we're on the phone with folks, we're taxing, uh, texting, or taxing too. Uh, our taxing is quite uh, texting, or our texting is quite taxing. 
<laughs> I, I love the fact that she's got a smile on her face, you know? She's doing all that and she's happy to do it, as opposed to this guy who's very, very serious. But it's like having six arms, you know? Uh, I just, uh, the things that you juggle, the, the, the people that you deal with. Have you ever had that one person that you just know by name? <laughs> that one person that you would pay $1,000 not to talk to. I mean, we all have them. We absolutely all have them. Holy cow. That's just a, an example of, of what you do in skill. Well, in this little cup of half demi toss, uh, time together, I want to focus on one of the things in celebration of customer service week that I think is one of the greatest skill sets of all salespeople. Hmm. And that's our ability to build value in our, in our solutions, how we build value in, in the things that we do when we're solving problems, uh, whether we're, uh, uh, helping them get involved in more product or whether we're truly dealing with a situation that needs to be solved and I need you to be happy about the solution. When I'm trying to build value in my solutions, how do I do that? I hear you cry. It's the number one skill set of all salespeople in building value to help people make wise decisions. And it's the number one skill set of all people who are uh, really great at customer service because not only do they have to answer the issues that are at hand and servicing the problems that they're facing, but they also have to ensure that the people are into it and bought in, which I think is tremendously important. And so I wanna talk about that today, I really, really do. So think about it. Um, we're gonna start off with a concept, kind of getting into it, is into the approach that I want you to take. And I kind of set it up this way. When you think of your year, rarely is your year like this. It's rarely linear, it's rarely straight up. And we're gonna go up because we're positive people, but rarely is your year, woohoo, you know, straight uh, and narrow. Usually it's like this. We've got, we've got a, a year that's got its ups, it's got its downs, it's got its cyclical, cyclicals, it's got its uh, high points and low points. Matter of fact, this is you on your little career train. Yeah, just riding that thing. Woo, it's a good year. Things are going awesome. But sometimes it's like, oh, no, we're in a crevice of despair. You know, people, issues. Bleh, I want to, I hate my, I hate you. I hate my life. But we're going to go, I know it. We're going to end on a high note. It's heading up. It's really good. That's kind of what most years are like. That's what most people are like. But then, have you ever noticed that there are people that you work with that have this kind of experience? I call them one percenters or pros, you know, the one percent of pros, the people where their highs are always as high, but their lows are rarely as low. And um, it's these people that I really think uh, are the ones that we want to duplicate. It's these people that I find um, have it all together. And the reason why I bring this up is because uh, I've been doing this for about 22 years now, a little over 22 years, where I've been working with the best of the best, people from around the country internationally on the topics of success when it comes to servicing people, whether you're identifying needs and filling needs as a salesperson or as a service person, I basically think it's the same thing. If I make you buy something or, or, or do something you don't want or need, I'm a con man, not a salesman. Nobody's asked you to do that. Matter of fact, people uh, really just want you to find the people that need what you have and get it to them or find the solution that you're dealing with and making sure that people have bought into it. That's all sales. We're trying to be influential. And the one percenters are those people that just do it right. They do things and they say things that make you go, man, I'm so glad I got them. I'm, I'm just, you know, I, that's, that's why I shop here. What do they do? I hear you cry. Well, welcome to the webinar because that's exactly what we're gonna talk about. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because there are three things that 1% of pros do that most people don't do that uh, I, I just wanna set as precedence for the time that we talk today. There is no way for me to give you ideas, give you tips and techniques that uh, will specifically be applied to your life and what you do on purpose. So you've got to approach it like a one percenter does. A one percenter does three things that most people don't do, especially in, in situations like this. Number one, they learn. They're open to ideas. And here's how you know you, you might be not as good as you think you are in this situation. Every time I bring up an idea, and that's all I can do because we're not interacting right now. Anytime I bring up an idea where you have this little voice that goes, well, that won't work with me because. Ah, uh, well, I appreciate that, Michael. We tried that earlier. Well, that's, that idea is so simple. Anytime you hear those voices, you kill those voices, mainly because 
A one percenter is constantly looking for something to add to their bag. And if we are constantly looking for something to knock out of the way as opposed to being open to something, uh, we're going to just miss opportunities. For the next half hour, I just want you to tell that voice to go shopping. Just be open to anything I say as if it was gold and you heard it for the first time. Because the second thing one percenters do is they're smart about what they hear. And what I mean by smart is they adapt what somebody else is saying, whether they're in their industry or not, to the situation they're in. So if you hear somebody throw out an idea, the first thing you actually should ask is, how can I use that? Does that apply to me? I mean, really be number one, open to the idea, but second of all, uh, try to figure out where does that apply to me and and you may have to do some adapting I don't know your world but you do and if there's something that's said um, that can really be used it's probably gonna take some tweaking on your part because you've got a different style than I do you've got a different approach you've got a different industry a different product a different pro product pattern it's all different so it's gonna take some adapting on your part and the last thing that one percenters do is they apply and that's one of the reasons why Chris from Pollock and Pollock has sponsored this particular event is because he's looking for ways to constantly encourage you to try something different, add something to your bag. So those three things, be open to something new, be smart about it, adapt to what you're, to what you're used to or, or how you apply it to yourself and look for something. I say look for three things. That way you'll, you know you're going to apply something. Okay. So learn, adapt and apply. That's the one percenters creed and uh, I challenge you to take that on for the next 45 minutes okay uh, I want to get into some of the psychology of servicing people you know identifying needs and filling needs there's a lot going on on the psychological level and I want to kind of uh, do a little baseline here because there's so much we can talk about but I want to boil it down to a particular area so picture this this is a human being is people that we deal with most of us don't do business with robots or animals. We do business with humans. And if you think about it, as a whole human being, we're really dealing with two areas of the psyche that I've got to deal with as a professional, especially when it comes to making decisions, when it comes to uh, acknowledging my solutions, or it comes to satisfaction, you know, creating satisfaction, a lot of human dynamics. Well, if you think about it, this is the setup. Most people are two things when it comes to decision making, when it comes to accepting what's going on. They're both logic and they're emotion. You're not going to have one or the other. We're usually both. We use them both. Um, it's not one side of your brain is logic and one side is the emotion. You're actually, you're, all your brain is working all the time on everything. Um, uh, and it's true that most of the time you're using 100% of your brain. It's not like we're only using 10% of your brain. Those are misnomers. But there are dynamics that are happening. For instance, if we were all logic um, in making our decisions, we'd be Spock. That's not happening, you know, most of us are both. But if we were all emotion, we'd be Richard Simmons, and that's not good either. <laughs> no, we're, we're usually both logic and emotion. But the reason why I bring this up is because when we're gonna talk about the most important skill set of helping somebody make a decision or helping somebody accept what's going on, we're dealing with something a little bit more than the other, and that's emotion. As a matter of fact, Usually in buying situations, motion has a much bigger role in having somebody actually move than logic. There's an old saying that says, I will, I, I will uh, buy emotionally, I will justify logically. That is a truth. I buy things emotionally and I justify logically. And that's including your solution as a service person. So it's not just throwing out ideas or solving a problem or fixing something, it's actually helping cause buy-in to where we're going or what I want them to do. Uh, so if, if we're both logic and emotion, just understand that emotion has the larger role when it comes to having somebody take action. There's also another saying that says, nothing moves without emotion. I find that to be true. And I bet you if you looked in your life, you'd find that to be true in your life as well. Um, nothing, no major decision was made on your part without emotion. Now we justified it logically. I mean, think about the last time you bought a car. You justified it in all kinds of ways, whether it was gas mileage or, uh, you know, insurance coverage, you know, breakdowns, um, uh, safety and records and all that good stuff. But, but why that car? Why that color? Why that combination? And there's usually an emotional situation behind it that's making me say, yes, let's do business right now. It's emotion. Like I said, we're both. It's not like one's going to be um, not used and, and, and over one. No, no, we're doing both. 
but one has more power. And I want you to have that in the back of your head as we go through this today, because that's, that's particularly the setup. All right. So here's where I want to get at. There's lots to talk about in the sales process and the, I'm sorry, the service process. Uh, well, I, I, let, I hope we've made that clear. I see service and sales as the same thing. I'm identifying a need and I'm filling a need. But if you think about that, there's a process involved. When somebody comes in with a, with a situation that I've got to help with, um, I don't just start throwing out solutions, obviously. There are steps involved. I mean, I got to get the conversation going. The first thing they buy is me, right? In any time of interaction with a human being, trust is massive. So if I'm not doing things to build trust, then it doesn't matter if my solution works or not. I'm going to have them um, put barriers up or uh, I might not be as convincing as I want to be with my solutions. So I've got to really understand there's some steps to take place. So I got to start a conversation. I got to build trust. The first thing they buy is me. Then they buy my company and then they buy my product. And it's in that order without fail. That's the way it goes. The next thing happens is I've got to identify what's going on. Assess the wants and needs. So before I start throwing out solutions, I've got to find out what the whole problem is. Most of us, you know, we hear one or two words or, or a little bit of the problem and we start throwing darts like we've got blindfolders on. Um, and and it, you, you know you're in this situation. If you, if you find yourself in situations where sometimes when you throw out an idea, people go, well, yeah, but the yeah, buts are a classic example is you don't know the whole story. You're throwing out solutions before you know the whole story. Yeah, buts are a classic example of too fast, slow down, you didn't get the whole story. But once I do have the entire story and it's time for me to talk, I wanna walk them through the solution. I wanna, I wanna help them see why we're gonna do this or why I recommend this if it's not just a clear cut answer. They've gotta be bought into that as well. Uh, before I wrap it up, I've gotta make sure there's no questions, I gotta eliminate the fog. And then of course, before I leave, I wanna ensure that everybody's on board. I want to secure that the solution is what they need, that we didn't miss anything, and, um, and then off we go. Now, if you think about it, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but the first letters of all of those uh, phrases start with sales. Um, I'm trying to be a person of influence, even if I'm solving problems. So I'm trying to, I, I like that word sales. It, it helps me remember, start the conversation, assess the wants and needs, lead them, through a, lead them through the solution, eliminate any fog or objections, and then secure the solution. Make sure they're on board. Well, in our time together, we're not going to cover all of that. As a matter of fact, um, uh, we'll find uh, you opportunities for really, you know, to, to break that down. But in this particular one, I want to focus on a particular area. And I think, you know, I kept saying it was the number one thing. Well, that's because this is what I find the true one percenters in sales and service do what we're about to talk about really well on a skill level, which means they make it look natural. But, but, there's a, but the psychology behind it is bought in. They get it and they know how to work it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to focus just on these particular two areas, assessing the wants and needs and building value in the solutions that I'm, that I'm talking about. Let's, let's, let's get started. Okay. I, I want to do a little exercise here that may be a little bit weird. And if you're on a podcast, if you're watching this on, uh, on, your, on your computer, uh, I would really recommend that you take the time to do this. It'll go a lot better, but I'm going to try to do it without interaction, which might be a little bit weird, but I'm going to try. Here's my exercise. I want you to try to be a salesperson, a service person for the next few minutes and really just kind of go along with what I'm saying. I'm going to assume because I've been doing this exercise all around the world for over 20 years and I think it gets the job done in really making my point, but I'm going to assume that you are like most audiences that I'm in front of. So try to be as honest as possible and really try to, um, uh, try, try to do it. Put me on pause and try to do the exercise if you can, and you'll see that I'm pretty close to what you were doing. But I really want you to do this exercise. Here we go. I bought a phone. My very first cell phone was a StarTac phone. I don't know if any of you were alive during this technology. This was the true flip phone, the first true flip phone. This little invention by Motorola revolutionized the phone industry. As a matter of fact, this was the first one that got away from the bricks that um, really said, oh, it's actually called a clamshell form factor. It opens up to have the same ear to mouth ratio as a regular phone, and then it folds up like a little clam, and they called it a clamshell form factor. As a matter of fact, when you went to Motorola school, because I worked with an organization that was a tele telecommunications company, um, this is what they taught them. This is a clamshell form factor. Please write it down. Clamshell form factor opens up to the same ear to mouth ratio and people write it down. Oh yes. Clamshell form factor. Very, very nice. Absolutely good. Um, however, 
how many times have you ever gone into a store and asked for anything in a clamshell form factor? Uh, interesting. But I want you to hang on to that because that's going to be important. So here's, here's the game. I bought my first cell phone for $1,000. I really did. I paid over $1,000 that day and I was quite happy. I really was quite happy. So here's the exercise. Why did I spend $1,000 buying that phone? Why would I spend $1,000? What, what, what justified me plunking down a grand that day in order to get this phone? Why? Can you, can you hit pause and just think it through? I, I try, to, try to write down three or four answers if you got them, if you got them. But, but, but why? Why would I spend $1,000 on that phone? I'll wait. Go ahead. Mm. While you're doing that, I'm going to have another little biscotti. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh, a little too big of a dunk there. Mm-hmm, 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 fantastic, mm. All right, pencils down. Why did I spend $1,000 on that phone? You know, that's an interesting question. I've asked audiences around the world that same thing. I would hold up a, a, a real star tack or I would put this on the screen and I would ask them. And then I'd get out two flip charts. And on one of the flip charts, I would ask the audience, why did I buy that phone for $1,000? And I just would write down whatever they said. If I was to ask you that same question in, in an audience of, uh, you know, however many we've got in our audience, a million people, I would probably get sort of the same answers. And I hear this all the time. Maybe they thought uh, it was cool. I thought it was cool. Or I, I, it helps me be communicative. I hear this word all the time. Did you have one of these words that, that sounded like this? It helps with communication. It helps staying in touch. All those words are around communicative. I've actually heard the word communicative a couple of times, which I think is a fun word. Not a real word, but it's a fun word. But yeah, so Mike, it helps you be communicative. Um, because I wanted it, which I respond, well, yeah, I wanted it. I obviously wanted it. I, I plunked down a thousand bucks, but why? Why did I want it? And I heard some other things like, well, because a salesperson thought it was cool or he, the salesperson thought that, that I should have it. And I, I trusted him. I, oh, a trust word. That's a big word. That's good. So the salesperson, maybe, maybe because um, I'm the, I wanted the latest and the greatest, or I thought the money was actually uh, not, a, not an issue because I'm rich. I don't know. But uh, did you get any of these? Did any of those appear on your list? I've heard all kinds of things, um, latest and greatest. Um, I wanted it to build my business. Uh, I wanted to keep in touch with my family, which is kind of communicative. They all kind of fall under those, 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 those categories. But, but my question is, which of these is right? I really want you to answer that question. Which of these on this list in round one? Cool, communicative, wanted it, salesperson, latest and greatest. It, it was cheap. Why? Why? Which, which of those worked? And the answer is... Well, you can't say any of them. You can't say, you can't, and some of you are picking one. Some of you went with cool. Maybe because you see me and you go, well, he's obviously a cool guy. I'm going to go with cool, which is what we do all the time as professionals. We go, I'm going to, I'm betting my money on cool. Well, in reality, how do you know that's it? You can't say all of them because frankly, you weren't there. You can't say none of them because you weren't there. So how could you have an opinion at all? <laughs> As a matter of fact, we've got an entire flip chart of opinion here and none of you were actually there. So you either belong to the psychic network or you are just uh, finding some other reason why that list exists. Isn't that interesting? As a matter of fact, there is a reason why that list exists. That list exists because you've purchased a phone before. Or maybe you've heard commercials that have told you that you should get things that are cool. Um, or you've been in front of salespeople that have said they really liked it and they, they've talked to a lot of people and they thought it was great. Whatever it is, that list did not come from me. So how could you possibly know or fathom or dream what would take me to spend $1,000 on that phone? You don't know. As a matter of fact, that is probably the smartest thing you could say is you don't know. So let's do it again. Let's do round two. As a matter of fact, here's what we're going to do. I want you to grab another piece of paper and I, I'm going to tell you, what questions would you ask me? You know, and I would ask the audience, so what would you want to know? And I, I hear all kinds of things like, why did you want a phone? What type of phone are you looking for? How would you use it? You know, um, do you use it in your business? Do you use it in your family? What type of coverage do you want? You know, all kinds of great questions. Let's say you ask good questions. I'm going to tell you those answers. As a matter of fact, for the next few minutes, I want you to practice something. 
I want you to practice listening to my answers. And I want you to practice capturing what I call power phrases. A power phrase is something that's in my verbiage, the way I look at life, the way I say things that makes you go, that's why he's spending $1,000 today. I want you to capture those things, okay? Capture those things and write them down as best you can, all right? So let's say I'm answering your questions and I say, well, you know, uh, Mr. Salesperson, well, I'm in today because I'm looking for a phone. Matter of fact, I'm looking for the Star Trek phone. <laughs> I saw Captain Kirk in the airport the other day. Um, he looked actually really cool. I mean, I, I saw Captain Kirk in the airport and he had flipped this thing over that looked like the communicator from Star Trek and he was talking into it like this and it looked just like Captain Kirk. It was literally, it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. He was going, there's something on the wing, you know, some, I don't know what he was saying, but he looked like Captain Kirk and it was really cool and I would pay money just to, just to play Captain Kirk on the airplane. That'd be awesome. But um, I, I, I'm losing business, to be honest with you. I've, uh, I've been running my business from the road for about three years now. It's just really starting to boom. My business is booming. And I've been running my business from the road, and I've been having some challenges. Uh, I've needed this for three years, but uh, I've been losing business because I can't get to pay phones fast enough. And I've, I've, I need more flexibility in getting to airplanes because, you know, my travel is constantly in, in flux. And so uh, uh, being able to make adjustments quicker has been a big issue. It's really starting to cost me money. But, but I'll be honest with you, the big reason why I'm here is I've been married for 13 years. I don't think we're going to make it to 14 because there is trouble in paradise, my brother. <laughs> I mean, there really is. I've got a wife who not only runs the office, but she's also a soccer mom. And so I've got four kids within four years. And so she runs it all when I'm not there. And uh, uh, evidently, my face has been showing a little tornado when she pulls up because I'll wait forever. It's not that, it's not that I won't wait. I, I don't mind waiting at all. I know she's really busy. But, but 10 minutes feels like an eternity when you don't know it's 10 minutes. And evidently, it's been showing up on my face. And we've had more fights in the last year than we've ever had in 13 years of marriage. So I don't think we're going to make it to 14 or she's going to kill me in my sleep. So I'm looking for the Star Trek phone. Do you guys got any of those? Pencils down, pencils down. All right, I hope you captured a power phrase or two, uh, something that made you go, that's why he's buying a $1,000 phone today. Mm -mm -mm. So what'd you say? Yell it out at the screen. I can't hear you, but it's fun. Um, could you say things like, losing business because I had missed calls? Um, oops, there we go. Uh, my, some of my, my flights had, had been missed. There was trouble in paradise. That was a power phrase. If you wrote down general words like he's got trouble in his marriage, that's not what I said. I said trouble in paradise. Uh, I really, I'm going to bring that up at a big time later on. It's imperative that you start capturing power phrases, not power thoughts or power ideas, power phrases, because it's how I see life, and you'll get to where you're connecting faster if you capture my verbiage. I did say Captain Kirk. I did say cool, too. So if you put cool on round one, you actually got one. That was great. Uh, 10 minutes feels like an eternity when you don't know it's going to be 10 minutes. All kinds of things you could have written down. Um, uh, I've been wanting to uh, uh, do this for three years. That's a power phrase. I've been running my business from the road. That's a power phrase. Anything that you think that I said that you know you're going to bring up again in your presentation, that's something that you cover. So my question is, look at those two lists. Which do you think has greater chance of building value when you go to answer a solution, round one or round two? I know you don't sell cell phones, or maybe some of you don't, but, but if you were to say, Mr. Hoffman, I'm going to recommend the StarTech phone. It's really cool. I mean, if you're looking for ways to stay communicative, this is the thing to have. I mean, everybody wants this phone. We love them here at the store. We've been selling them off of the streets like hotcakes. They're $1,000. They are the latest and the greatest. And for the money, it's really a great deal. Should I wrap that up for you? How'd that sound? Pretty good. What if I did round two a little bit? If I said, Mr. Hoffman, if you're losing business because you've missed calls, if you're having troubles missing flights, uh, we've got to make some business investments for you today, <clears throat> especially if you're running your business from the road. It's time to do something. And we actually do have the Captain Kirk phone. It actually does look like the Star Trek communicator. Uh, it's called the Star Tack, but we call it Star Trek all the time. It is indeed the coolest thing. And I, I mean, that's fine. If you've been looking to do this for three years, that's great. But I want to save your marriage, brother. Come on over here. Let me show you what we got. Do you see the difference already? 
Do you see the difference in the value that you're building with your solutions um, just by doing some simple things like connecting to the customer? This is the end of part one, and there's so much more.